questions to the floor. If anyone has any questions, we'd be welcome to take questions from anyone out there. I am one of the older people that started driving because I couldn't ride anymore. <laughs> and um, I'm wondering what do you think about uh, the amateurs coming in? Are we going to be able to afford it? And is it going to be encouraging for us? Uh, is that, that's with regard to driving? Yes, sir. Um, you know, yes, you'll be able to afford it because everybody affords what they can afford. They find their, um, their own balance. It's no different than driving a car. You know, you drive a nice car, which is a Volkswagen or a Toyota or a Chevy, or you drive a Bugatti or a, something like that. Um, certainly, um, I think the, the, the good thing, uh, and to sort of play on what David was saying, the United States in the last two or three years has a, a, a great education program um, developing here uh, to help people understand a sort of a standard normal method um, of, of driving. So are you going to be able to afford it? Yes. Um, will you be able to do it? Absolutely. And I've seen uh, seen coached. Uh, uh, Fritz Gruppi to a national championship at 68 years old, uh, the best in his sport. He spent, you know, he sort of said, um, I have a lot of time to, to, uh, to devote to the sport right now. Um, and I don't, I don't think that um, really there's any reason that somebody who's uh, 60 or 65, as long as they're athletic uh, and have a sharp mind, and uh, keen interest and passion for the sport, I, there's no reason they can't be. I, I can add a little of that too. I, particularly, is, think about what your goals are, because if uh, if you if you have if you have financial limitations and you want to be the one man one person show, that's okay. I don't discredit it, but you have to accept that you might have limitations. And if you really want to be top of the part of the higher levels of the sport of, of any discipline, then realize that. You don't get there by not forming a team, and it takes a lot of people. I get privileged to ride occasionally, but I'll tell you, it's no less important a position on the team than about the 10 or 15 other people that are behind me in some position. And if we are, particularly if you're interested in helping us perform well at high levels, internationally, representing the country or whatnot, I encourage all of you to consider, do I really have to be the rider or the one and is it right for me? Do I have a niche in some way I can contribute to a bigger part of a team behind a couple of great horses going forward? And you may find that you'll get more enjoyment out of it that way and more contact and, and a greater experience with horsemanship than you could just doing it alone. And, and that's how you achieve. Anybody can afford it. Join up. If we, the rest of the world, particularly in South America and everything, competing in endurance, part of the trouble we're having in America is that we tend to try to be too individualistic and a little too selfish, you know, about how we work. And you cannot get to the high levels one person alone. You ha we have to work together in collectives and clubs and, and, and be, let ourselves be greater than the sum of our other parts of our components. I think we have another question over here. Um, not exactly a question, but more of a statement, really. Being a young American equestrian athlete, I think we do have an amazing program set up in this country, but people really don't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Since I was eight years old, I was in the United States Pony Club, and now I am fortunate enough to work for one of the top dressage riders in our country. And I have taken every opportunity that's been given to me, and I've worked for a lot of them, too. I've taken some of them, too, you know. but. Um, there's a big gap between foundations like Pony Club and then the juniors and the young riders, especially in dressage, because that's the discipline I ride in, but I've competed in dressage and show jumping and hunters and eventing, everything. And I didn't even know about the juniors and the young riders when I was competing in Pony Club. I, that was a world, I moved to Florida and it opened my eyes. I had no idea that this world existed. And I think that's the problem we have, is bridging the gap between those two things. Not exactly that we don't have the foundation here. America is an amazing country. We can do anything. But it's just that people don't take advantage of the opportunities. And I know a lot of people are really stepping in that direction right now and moving forward to make that happen. 
But everyone here can make a difference doing that if you just take that young rider at your barn, that eight-year-old girl who loves ponies, and show her that there's another world out there and we can really have some amazing teams in our future. Thank you for your input. Any more questions? On the topic of food, um, I'm not going to tell you my age, but I've seen a lot of things with you know, the KER going on. What are your own personal, um, have you seen with the better foods that are out there, the better products for your horses? Do you have like a, a story for us about, you know, um, food that has helped your equine athlete um, that you've seen over the years? Is that has, for anyone in particular? No, mm -mm. just if anybody has one where they saw a food really make a difference in a horse, really make a difference. Well, I'll, I'll jump in there. It's a little bit with a company we started with for a long time ago, but the, um, the, the interesting thing about this company that was actually doing the, the feed, they, I think they actually changed the world, and they actually went into, they, they look into the research quite early, and the, the big thing that I liked about this company, and much like what KER is doing, is actually just quality of the product, so when you open up the bag, it's going to be the same every single time. Um, no matter where I am. Um, we started then when we went to Europe and we went to international team trips when we were going over for three to four weeks. Joe helped us set it up that we would, um, you know, that we would bring our feed with us instead of relying on changing the quality of the nutrition by the country we're going to go to. And so really the look at treating the horse like an athlete and then having that type of quality knowing that quality is, knowing that research is behind it, and being able to keep that consistent no matter where I'm gonna go in the world, that really, I think it was in a place that changed the way that we used to think instead of just going to somewhere else, well, we'll just feed whatever the local feed is. Um, we stopped that thinking really in the, in the kind of the mid 90s, early 90s when really KER came on, came on board and came onto the program, and we met them really through the Olympic Games process. Um, and the research that was leading up to Atlanta, you know, with the heat and humidity um, studies that they were doing. And that really changed our way of um, starting to really look at what we were doing from a competitive point of view, um, from every aspect of the horses, not just from a training side. You know, it, certainly in our program, we have the USOC um, kind of gotten involved quite a lot about nutrition, getting the riders to treat themselves as athletes, which not necessarily they do. Um, and uh, that is something that has to be along the same lines because um, well, I think a lot of performances, certainly with the job that I'm in, and I've seen it, a lot of performances do suffer by nutrition, especially in, comp in the actual competition time. So I'd like to thank our panel. Thank you to Chester Weber. Thank you to David O'Connor. Thank you to Joe thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Samantha. She did a lovely job tonight. MCN, I'd like to again thank all of you for coming and, and you guys, thank you very much for this input and we really appreciate your support and uh, thank you very much for coming.